Today we're announcing the nomination of William Floyd to lead the South Carolina Department of Employment and Workforce and that some of the folks here may have to leave momentarily to gavel in the Senate or get called otherwise so we'll, we'll move right along. We have a number of speakers and I'd say just briefly that this is an enormously important position as you've seen uh, for a number of years particularly the last few. Uh, its uh, jurisdiction has been expanded with the work that was required in the pandemic and when Danny Elsey uh, undertook that position the next thing we knew here came the here came the pandemic but despite that South Carolina continued to grow and we are we are booming now as you know with recent announcements that are, are really off the scale and are great news for our people but the job of all the state agencies everything we do is integrally entwined with workforce development. Good health, broadband, everything. The schools, education. So we communicate, collaborate, and cooperate unlike any other state. We have members of our cabinet that go to the military-based task force to determine what more the state can do to help, help our veterans. And as you know, our veterans are a great source of talent as well as inspiration in our state. And we're going to have a number of military leaders here in a little while. We have eight, eight major bases. And South Carolina is, I think, still the only state that has signed a, an agreement with the United States Army. It's called the, the, the PAYS program. And it is for providing jobs for or retired military. And what it means is that anyone that, that leaves the, the United States Army and comes to South Carolina, we'll guarantee them five, five job interviews. As you know, we are working to move the interstate internet out uh, away from the interstates and uh, into the small towns, the small roads, the dirt roads, so everyone has access to broadband. Also, just a little while ago, we had meeting with, meetings with the hospital systems to see about expanding the opportunities for good health for all of our people. So it all fits together, is my point. But this particular agency, Employment and Workforce, is right in the middle of it and serves as a place to coordinate with all the other agencies and make sure that we're bringing all the assets to the forefront. Its job is to help people find jobs. And th these are things that Danny Elsey expanded dramatically and provided a model for the rest, rest of the country in matching people who were looking for jobs with the jobs who were looking for people. And it's worked extraordinarily well. We have the best technical college system in the world. That also goes towards workforce. We have 16 of them, as you know. And the, the, the legislature, the General Assembly, is providing funds for that. We've been doing it. It is enormously successful, particularly the Workforce Scholarship Program, where those businesses seeking employees to come work in high-demand fields, can uh, those, those people can get scholarships to go to our technical college system. We're matching the businesses with qualified candidates. We're reviewing statistics to see where the employees are, where the jobs are, what the national trends are, how we fit into that, and how we can be ahead of the curve in seeing that our people in our state have the opportunity for the best jobs that we can have in the nation. So Danny Elsey has been doing this job for over four years and has taken this agency to you know, even levels that we had not conceived of until the pandemic hit, and then we saw how much we can really do when we really do have to. So I'd like now, as we move with the speakers, to call on Danny Elsey. Thank you, Governor. Good morning, everyone. Legislators, William, state agency heads that I see here, Business leaders, appreciate all of you coming. As the governor said, th this is a very important position for the uh, for the state of South Carolina, and it's going to become even more important. Uh, as I see Secretary Lightsey standing over here, all of us know what's just been announced in the state of South Carolina. Uh, the BMW EV, the battery plant in Florence, recycling plant in Berkeley County, the new Scout plant in Richland County, 
Every one of those are going to require thousands of employees, thousands and thousands of employees. Many of them are going to have to be skilled engineers, and we're going to have to make sure that we are producing the number of engineers that we need and that we're going to have enough people who are trainable to go into those plants and do the work that is going to be required. Uh, and that is exactly what uh, this agency does. We anticipate workforce needs. We run the federal training programs. We're involved in a lot of state training programs. We assess our needs. We do uh, a gap analysis to look at what we got and figure out what we're going to need and set those uh, numbers. So uh, this agency, in my opinion, is going to become more and more important. There is legislation pending that will consolidate an awful lot of workforce development. And if it does, you are going to have by far the best workforce development agency in the state of South Carolina that uh, in the nation, excuse me. So it's going to be wonderful for us. Now, let me talk for a few minutes about the nominee, uh, William Floyd. This is someone that I've known for 40 years. Uh, I was, as most of you know, a labor law, uh, management labor lawyer for about 45 years. And about 40 years ago, I met uh, William Floyd. He was a young law student. He was applying for a summer internship position with uh, my firm, among, I might add, many, many highly qualified candidates. It was a good job. He was selected for it, went to work uh, for us, did a great job, and ultimately was hired as a first-year associate uh, with the firm. Uh, he succeeded, did very well, became a partner, and had a wonderful career doing labor and employment law, both, which is exactly what I did and which is what I think is a perfect prerequisite for experience uh, to come in and handle this job. Um, in June of last year, uh, we changed our relationship, and William came to work for us. He retired from his firm, Nexon Pruitt, uh, and came to work for the Department of Employment and Workforce as our chief of staff. And in doing that, he went through extensive training for a couple months, formalized, set out tra training to introduce him to every aspect of the agency, from unemployment to workforce development, the training programs, the uh, American Job Centers, running them, and the labor market information, which is becoming a more and more important part of our agency, where we do analytic studies of the, uh, of the workforce. Once he got through his training, he started getting assignments, and he had project after project where he learned more and more, and he did that for months and months. And then in January and February of this year, he basically was sitting by my side as we were in every meeting making decisions thinking through issues, looking at how it uh, affected us in the uh, state of South Carolina. Uh, I can't think of anyone at all that would be more qualified than he is to take the job. Uh, he, he not only has the background, but he has the experience of doing what we do. Let me also say that he is a good person, an honest person, a smart person, a hardworking person, and a leader. And those are the characteristics that you want in someone who's going to run a state agency uh, and is exactly what we need, I guess it's now they need, at uh, the Department of Employment and Workforce. So I support him 100 percent, and I think he'll be great for the agency and for the state of South Carolina. And I will now turn the podium over to William. Well, good morning, and what an introduction. Um, Governor? Thank you for your confidence in me. Dan, thank you for that very kind and generous introduction. It's a privilege to be here today. Um, as uh, Dan was mentioning, I've practiced labor and employment law for more than 35 years. And I represented clients, both big and small, and most of them related to workforce-related issues. So I, on a client-by-client -client basis, I help them with their workforce issues in South Carolina as well as outside of South Carolina. Also during this time, I was a member of the Society of Human Resource Managers, SHRM. For more than 20 years, uh, I was actively involved. And one thing I learned from our HR managers is that it's very challenging sometimes to recruit train and retain employees. So I, I heard from the inside out about those challenges. And then I also considered uh, what the governor mentioned as well about the 
awesome technical college system we have here in South Carolina. We're extremely blessed to have that. And, it, and it's my honor to serve on the technical college board. So I've seen the hard work that goes on uh, on that board as well as in each of the technical colleges as they are lifting this up, whether you've never been to school before and you need to get trained or whether this is the second time around, the technical college system is ready for that next step. And so we're very fortunate to have that as we are looking forward to all the great opportunities that come to South Carolina, both in the past as well as now. So having done that, practiced law for 35 years, I, I was thinking, what's the next step? And I can think of no greater honor of public service where I could combine my, my love of public service uh, as well as my love of South Carolina. And when I do that at the best agency, in my opinion, and that's the agency that we're here today talking about, the Department of Employment and Workforce, because it's at that agency where workforce is done day in and day out. We have an awesome team at DO, and this team is spread across the state, based in Columbia, and every day what we do at DO is workforce development, also unemployment insurance, LMI, and, and other um, awesome uh, related divisions that do the great work of DO. One thing that we do at DO, Governor, is we, uh, don't you love that acronym? I just love it is uh, we practice the three C's, and I think you mentioned the fourth one as well. So we communicate, and we cooperate, uh, and we collaborate, and we do it very well as a team. But the, the fourth C, the one you mentioned, we also coordinate. And what I look forward to do, at do, uh, both as the uh, acting executive director, and then if, if confirmed by uh, the Senate, as uh, the agency director, is to continue the hard but very important task of coordinating the workforce development pipeline, which is a vital thing needed for South Carolina's continued growth. So, Governor, thank you for that opportunity. Director Elsie, thank you for the kind introduction, and it's a privilege to be here. Very excited about this opportunity. If I may turn over the podium to Chairman Sandifer. Governor, right, good to see you. Thank you for allowing me to come and speak with you for just a few minutes. I chair the House Labor, Commerce, and Industry Committee, which is all the businesses of South Carolina. But I want to specifically talk just a moment about a bill that will receive third reading in the House today and will be sent to the Senate. And it's dealing with the Department of Employment and Workforce. There's a lot of work been going on behind the scenes for several months now to work out the details of a bill that changes the way do actually operates. One of the things that I find so very interesting is that there will be a website on which employers can show that they're looking for employees and what type, but also that employees can get on that same website and let employers know that they are available to work. And I think this is critical to the way we do things. We're trying to not only educate people, but at the same time, trying to make sure that the workforce is available and ready to go to work. So I, I think if, if we had an acronym for Ready SC, that's it. We've got to have those employees, as the director talked a few moments ago, we are looking forward to working with the new director. Uh, one of my staff members has interviewed him multiple times. I'm confident that he will do an outstanding job for the state of South Carolina. And I think, director, you will find that this new bill that we're passing in the House today and will be going to the Senate, I think you will find that helps you in your job as, as the director of the Department of Employment and Workforce. So with that, I'll quit, but I do thank you for the opportunity to come and speak. Thank you, Ms. Sanford. Stephen Gilchrist. Yes, sir. Well, good afternoon. I'm Stephen Gilchrist, Chairman and CEO of the South Carolina African American Chamber of Commerce and Governor. I want to thank you for having me here today, and I certainly want to commend my colleague, uh, 
William Floyd for being the nominee to the Department of Employment and Workforce. Uh, Director Elsie, let me thank you, sir, for your work uh, over the last few years uh, at the Department of Employment and Workforce. During COVID, we saw about 30% of our chamber lose uh, businesses uh, due to the pandemic. Uh, one of the things that we were grateful for was that we did not lose many entrepreneurs. Many of those folk continue to be entrepreneurs in the space of small business. And as a result of that, um, it was the, employment, the, the Department of Employment and Workforce that instituted a program to help retool the workforce in South Carolina to allow workers then to be able to come and be re-educated and retrained to be able to go and work in some of our small businesses that were left due to the pandemic. And so, sir, I want to thank you for your leadership on that. And I'm certainly looking forward to our chamber continuing to work with the Department of Employment and Workforce as we continue to move through this next phase. So again, I want to thank you for the opportunity to be here today. Thank you. Tom Davis, Senator sure. Davis. Thank you. Thank you, Governor, and good morning. Um, my name's Tom Davis. I'm the state senator for District 46, which is Buford and Jasper counties. And I serve as the chairman of the Senate Labor, Commerce, and Industry Committee. And so two very important things we'll be charged with doing in the next couple of weeks. The first is um, confirming this excellent nominee. And I say excellent uh, advisedly. Um, it's the governor's person. It is the existing director's person. Um, and it is also the person that has been screened already by a review committee and found qualified. So, um, and that all combined with what I know um, about Mr. Floyd, um, I don't want to go ahead and, and speak for my colleagues in the Senate, but I don't see any difficulty with this whatsoever. I look forward to setting confirmation hearings quickly, um, getting it passed out of committee onto the floor, and having him confirmed. Uh, secondly, I'd like to say um, uh, comments in regard to what San uh, uh, Representative Sanford just said about the Speaker's bill. Um, and I commend the Speaker for filing this bill and that it does consolidate under the Department of Employment and Workforce other aspects of, of employment and workforce and that critical connectivity between um, our workers and the technical college system that trains our workers and the employers that then put those uh, individuals to work. So this is an incredibly important uh, agency. I think you've seen uh, the importance in connection with the recent announcement, announcement for, uh, for the SCALP uh, uh, project. Um, and, and I really expect great things in the years to come. And uh, my old boss, who used to be in this room, and I kind of got PTSD for a little bit walking in here. Um, it's been 20 years, and apparently that's not long enough. Um, but he used to talk about soil conditions and, and, and trying to make South Carolina a place where companies wanted to come, invest their capital, start business, um, and, and hire workers. And, and it involves things like, you know, a, a good justice system, good education, uh, low taxes, uh, low regulations, uh, good highway system, good airports, good seaport, all of which we have. But what Governor McMaster has emphasized, uh, and I think rightly so, is the role that workforce plays in this and having a trained workforce and a workforce that can quickly adapt to what the employer's needs might be. And I think the fact that Mr. Floyd has served on the board of the technical college system, you know, that's important because what happens is the TCL or the, the college system, they have a curriculum that is tailored to what our workforce needs are. And so having somebody with experience, not only in the law and not only with uh, the state agency, but also in regard to that aspect of that supply chain for workers. So, um, Governor, I think you've hit yet another home run here with this uh, appointment. I look forward to a swift confirmation. I look forward to sending that uh, legislation to your desk so that the Department of Employment and Workforce can continue doing great things to the state of South Carolina. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Uh, one thing before we open it up for questions is y'all may have, may have heard Scott Keogh, who is the president of, of, of Scott Mo, uh, Scout Motors, say the other day when we had a, a press conference that he referred to that, that ability to move quickly and decisively and, uh, and with strength. He said that the whole process of coming to South Carolina, first they had to narrow down the, num the sites, and they had how many? 74 sites that they considered in the country, and they picked South Carolina. That's quite good right there. But also, he said, while some states and relations in the past have spent, spent a couple of months or 60 days shuffling papers, we got the whole thing done from beginning to end. And that's because of the communication, collaboration, and cooperation among our people and our, our state agencies. But that's how we get these things done, and we're going to keep on doing it. Anyone have a question for anyone here? Yes, sir. Legislators can do to help you guys' lives be easier? 
Well, the major thing they can do is pass that bill. It, it will be major for us. It will be. Uh, uh, it will actually install accountability into the workforce development area, not only for us, but for the people who provide the training, and that's the technical college system and the four-year uh, systems out there. So that is by far the most in, important thing. Biggest challenge we're going to have is finding people. Uh, and the only way we're going to get enough people in the long run is two things. People moving into the state of South Carolina, which there are a lot. I think we were third in the nation last year in inflow, from, from, according to the Census Bureau. Uh, and sixth in the nation, based not on per capita, but actual number of people. So huge there. And the other thing is, we got to have more people in the state of South Carolina that work. We uh, we got to impro improve our labor force participation rate. We got to pull people off the sidelines and get them back into the workforce. Uh, that's a major area for us. We do not have a good record there for many many reasons. But we've got a program going on that is studying it hard, both academic studying, giving us their research, uh, for-profit research people who work in this area. We now have their recommendations. William will be working with the committee to put this into place and to execute it. And when we do that, we will start the progress of getting more people to go back to work in the state of South Carolina. And not only will that help future employers, but folks, it means a billion dollars to us. One percent increase in the labor force participation rate means $1.2 billion in payroll. And this is not using some Roll up of seven times seven. This is actual numbers. So it's big for us, but that's what I see as both our challenges and our opportunities. And why do you see those people? Why are they? What's the reason behind them sitting on the sidelines, as you say, when there's so many job openings yeah. in South Carolina? Well, there are a lot of them who uh, move here to retire. So you got to take age into consideration. You got to reduce the age areas that you are actually looking at. But once you get beyond that, you got transportation issues, you got child care issues, you've got people living in rural areas where there aren't as many jobs. All three of those are going to be big areas. And by the way, I will mention all three of those are also mentioned in the legislation, that, that those are areas to be uh, uh, addressed. How do you plan to address making the salaries competitive with other you know, states in this country to attract more people to the labor force? Well, uh, the salaries are competitive here in the state of South Carolina. I, I don't have the exact numbers with me, but we've gone up dramatically just since the, uh, since the pandemic. But our, our wages uh, here, now, it, particularly if you're talking about manufacturing, our manufacturing wages here compared to our neighbors around here, I can assure you. We, we've got good wages. It's not a lack. The, the labor force task force says one of the big reasons people are not going back to work is they don't know about high paying jobs. They're out there. We got to communicate it. I mean, we got jobs starting at $20 an hour, going up to $28 an hour. There's a manufacturer in uh, Berkeley County starting people at $28 an hour, starting at $28 an hour, and they'll go to 35 in a year if they stay. Those, that's a lot of money, folks, for somebody who's uh, working uh, production. So it's not necessarily that wages need to go up. They have gone up. If you talk about the service industries, retail, food, hospitality, hotels, and that sort of thing, you know, there ain't any minimum wage anymore that they're paying. They're all up into the 12 to $15 an hour. So wages have gone up. Wages have always been high in uh, manufacturing over the past few years. So money should not be a deterrent. We do job fairs right now in the state of North Carolina strictly for South Carolina employers. And folks, they come because we got more high paying jobs in that part right above Greenville and Spartanburg County uh, than they do in North Carolina. So I, I don't think wages are going to be our problem. How many people were uh, considered for uh, Mr. Ford's uh, position? Who, is the, who can speak for the committee? Of course, Mr. Hardy's on it. Thank you, Governor. <coughs> there, um, there, by law, you're supposed to su submit three nominees mm -hmm. to the committee, but we only had one applicant. So we did a joint resolution, which allowed us to go ahead and screen Mr. Floyd, so we didn't have to go through that whole process again. Thank you. More questions? Very good. Can okay. we do off topic? We'll do them afterwards. Okay. We'll come back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Nice job.
Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Wow, we've been trying to get together.